Good morning, it's Saturday. We continue with Acts chapter 9, today from verse 36. Now in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated in Greek is called Dorcas. This woman was abounding with deeds of kindness and charity, which she continually did. And it happened at that time that she fell sick and died. And when they had washed her body, they laid it in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, having heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him, imploring him, Do not delay in coming to us. So Peter arose and went with them. When he arrived, they brought him into the upper room, and all the widows stood beside him, weeping, and showing all the tunics and garments that Dorcas used to make while she was with them. But Peter sent them all out, and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand and raised her up. And calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. It became known all over Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And Peter stayed many days in Joppa with a tanner named Simon. Here we have a wonderful miracle of the resurrection of this lady, Tabitha, who was doing so much good work for the church and for the poor. And we see here a continuation of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus has said to his disciples, you will do greater things than I did. And we see this continuation. Jesus raised a few people from the dead. And now we see Peter doing exactly the same. Now, let's be clear. It wasn't Peter who raised Tabitha from the dead. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus working through Peter. But the important thing to see is that this continued in the apostles. It's the same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus to do his ministry, empowered Peter, and empowers each one of us. The Holy Spirit is not limited. He can do anything. And if if it is God's will and desire to raise somebody from the dead, it happens even today. All sorts of miracles occur today. But it's got nothing to do with you or me. We are simply the vessels through which God works. We need to make ourselves available to him and say, Lord, here I am. If you want to use me in any way to do anything, I am ready. It may be a menial task. It may be something as wonderful as praying for the sick and seeing them healed or even praying over a dead person and seeing them raised. But let's realize only a few people were raised in the Bible and a few people get raised today. We don't go down the cemetery and order everybody to get up. That day will come when the trumpet will sound. But at the moment, the important thing is that we continue in the ministry that Jesus has given to us and realize that there is no limitation, that he works according to his will. We can't command these things to happen, but they happen when God so desires for them to happen. It's important that we are in tune with him and we line up with his will. And then everything will be okay. And that's important whether we're doing big things or little things. Because even the little things are big things. Lord God, Heavenly Father, help us to realize that the most important thing is that we are in tune with you. That we walk daily and step with you. So we say, here I am, Lord, use me, send me. Whatever you want to do through me, be it a menial task, be it something a little bit bigger than that. We leave it up to you. We surrender all to you. We do everything in your name. We do everything as if we're doing it for you, because we are. And so, Lord, help us to realize and to have that right attitude and that right understanding. We thank you that you are so wonderful. We thank you that you are more powerful than even death, that our greatest enemy has been defeated by your resurrection. You are the first to rise from the dead. Father God, we love you, bless and praise and worship you. We thank you for this day. We ask your blessing over this day. We ask your blessing over our country. We pray for our leaders and those in authority that you would give them wisdom and understanding. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the dying and all who are in need. We pray for an end to the war in the Ukraine. We pray for those who are suffering in Morocco and Yumea and other places around the world where there are tragedies and difficulties. Heavenly Father, have mercy. We ask your blessing over our loved ones near and far. We pray for our sick. We pray that you lay your hand upon them and heal them and comfort them and strengthen them. Be with those who are mourning, Lord. Would you just wipe the tears from their eyes and fill them with the hope of the resurrection for all who believe in you. 
And that brings us to pray for those who do not believe in you, and that's so many. We pray, Lord, that many would turn to you today, would repent of their sins, accept you as Lord and Savior, call upon your name and be saved. We commit all to you. We ask your blessing. Above all things, we pray that your will be done. And now we join together in praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. So my friends, have a blessed day. God be with you. God willing, I'll see you for our service tomorrow. If you are in Sydney, we have our annual Harvest Fate tomorrow, beginning with the service at 11 o'clock in the church. God bless you.